Hello, members. Tom Morrison here from the Metal Treating Institute right here from the home offices in Nashville, Tennessee. We're here to talk about energy and gas. But before we jump into that, I just want to remind you, you can see down at the bottom, you'll see a little, about, a little word called chat. If you hover around that and click on it, the chat box will come up on your right hand side and you can click down at the bottom and click type messages here. You can ask any question you want about energy to our guru, Mr. Mike uh, Payne, who, or, uh, who's here with us today. And, uh, and if you want, to, I've put in there, hello members, where are you listening from? Put in your city state where you're listening from. We'd love to know who's listening in. So, um, but a couple of things I wanna to mention today, what's exciting going on at MTI is we just released our data submission forms for our wage and hour uh, benefit survey every year. So in this labor drought, knowing if you're competitive in your labor workforce, how much do you give as raises? How do you compare? You can fill that out. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. You can get your HR person to fill that out and you submit that into the place where we tell you to send it to our third party research firm. And in uh, early October, we're gonna come back with the data sets of that. So you'll have a full, I guess about a 22 page report sharing by district and nationally how your pay rates are going in your area. So that's a very important thing in this year of labor. And then the second thing is you're not gonna wanna miss June 22nd. We're having a special uh, one hour version of, of, of this, of, MTI, of the MTI webcast with Nick Espinosa, our cybersecurity fanatic and expert. Uh, ransomware has been going crazy the last few months with big companies to small companies. And a number of members said, Tom, can we get someone to speak to us on how do we prevent ransomware from tackling our company? So we've got the best person coming online on June 22nd at 2 p.m. Eastern time to discuss that. So you want to mark that on your calendar. And the third thing is sales are up. Sales are up, sales are up. So our forecasters earlier this year came out in the first quarter, get this, they said that we're looking at a negative 4.8% decrease in sales as an industry. After one quarter, because our uh, economy is so dynamic, is that it's now shifted to a 10.8% increase overall. So that's great news, things are really shifting. And to show that, um, sales last month were down to 7.5% as industry as a whole, and this past month, we saw them, they kicked up 29, uh, they kicked up 29% over last April sales year to the, uh, month to month, putting us at an even place for sales. So we're even up and we're just growing in the future. So lots of hope and lots of good activity coming on board and lots of things happen at Metal Treating Institute. But today, it's all about energy with Michael Payne from Appy Energy. Michael, say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Tom, for the opportunity. It's great to be back with you. Again. Yeah, man. So what I love about having Michael come on is he is one of the executives of a APPI Energy. That they're the endorsed carrier for energy procurement for all of our members. And we have a whole host of members that use their services and love them. And I think they love them for one reason, especially mm -hmm. now. So every day you come in the office, you have employees and customers, and then you have all the unproductive stuff like looking at energy costs that you do. <laughs> and when you're in an employer drought like we're at are right now with employees and, and customers are looking for value, it's very important that you as an owner or a plant manager or someone in leadership are not spending time looking at energy prices. You're spending time making sure your employees want to stay in your work culture, building work culture, and or making sure you're driving value to your customer. Because a great salesperson told me years ago that someone's, your customer is always someone else's prospect and your employee is always someone else's hire. So it's important that you look at the resources like Appy Energy that MTI provides. You can spend almost all your time building culture and employees and building customers and value. And so that's what we're going to talk about here today of the types of things that Michael thinks is important, no matter who you use for your energy, but they're a great resource for you. So Michael, give everybody just a real quick 30, 45 second who Michael Payne is and, and Appy Energy. Okay. Well, thanks again, Tom. It's always a pleasure to be with you. And I, this is one in a series of these that we've done and, We've had very good response and input from your members after the sessions, and I encourage everyone participating today to follow up with Tom with my firm, APPI. Um, APPI is an independent energy consulting firm um, that has been due diligence by Tom and your association, as well as 160 other trade associations around the country, and selected by them to be that independent voice, that independent consultant around all things energy, particularly on the supply and the usage management side of things. So we're available to you as part of your member benefit program. There's uh, no cost, no obligation for you to reach out to us and us to get to know you and see if there are ways that uh, we can help you. My background is in law and investment banking. Um, I've been in the energy industry now for uh, almost 30 years. And 25 years ago, uh, our founder and uh, CEO and president, Walter Moore, 
started APPI as a consultancy. I joined them soon after and we flourished ever since. So our primary go-to-market strategy has been through trade associations, including yours. And uh, it gives us that closeness, that warmness, that continuity. And we're always reporting back to Tom and your members and he's always, and uh, associations are offering us opportunities like this to share information and mind share with, with members to help you be more profitable and be competitive. Well, Michael, we're glad you're here today, but hey, let's get right into it. So February seemed to be this crazy month of activity that had crazy impacts on energy, no matter where you're at. So, so what happened there? What happened was URI, URI, the big winter storm that hit primarily across the state of Texas and not just in the southern part or the northern part, pretty much across the entire state. It had ripple effects all up through the mid-continent particularly on the gas pipeline systems, mm -hmm. all the way up into the hubs in Chicago and into Kentucky. And that in turn caused probably many of your members and other industrial and, uh, consumers and uh, manufacturing consumers who use gas to see rising prices in February from that, even up in the upper Midwest and even back in the uh, Western part of Pennsylvania and West Virginia, even that far east. So, and then as far as Texas specifically, boy, you know, we're still understanding the total effects of that. The governor, uh, Governor Abbott is signing legislation that was formulated as a result of URI. In fact, yesterday he signed two bills that relate to energy. If you have locations in Texas, our team would be happy to talk to you about that. We're, we're on it. We're staying updated on it. We have several hundred clients across the state of Texas been active there since the market opened in 2001. But uh, that's what happened in February and the ripple effects, again, have impacted many of your members and other businesses like yours across parts of the country for both gas and electricity, specifically in Texas, but gas across the country. Now, things have settled down quite a bit from that February blip. It was mid-February holiday, President's Day weekend, long weekend, and price, just to give you a sense of the dramatic change in the pricing for natural gas. Last October, natural gas hit its all-time low at a buck 43 a decatherm. And your members wow. who are involved in this understand what that means. All-time low in the retail markets. In February, during URI, it hit 15, or excuse me, $23.86 a decatherm. 23? So the, yeah, it, for, for a couple of days during that period in some of these markets. So, obviously, then, customers that were, you know, on a floating or indexed pricing structure for their gas and their electricity that was key to it, just got hammered in February. In fact, many of them had budgets blown for the entire year. Now, some of the legislation that Governor Abbott is still working through, he may sign, he may not. The session ended at the end of May in Texas. Then could give a little bit of relief, we think, we hope, to some of the commercial customers in Texas, but that's still not completely um, clear. But the point is, is that you talk about volatility, that's volatility where you go from the all time low last right. October. Now, last October was toward the end of the COVID year. Industry was down. You, Tom, you mentioned earlier, you know, what your sales numbers and projections and revenues were looking like. Right. You know, going into last fall and then coming into this year. Well, I can tell you that we talk with clients all across the country every day. We have clients in many different silos of manufacturing, right? And industry. And you know what? They're like your members, they're busy. Right. They're trying to find workers. Their supply chains have been disrupted to a certain extent, not all, but they're glad that they have our team available to them to help them with this piece of their business. So if, you're sa if your sales are going up, your production's going up, your energy costs are gonna go up, unless they're managed properly. Right. Because you're gonna use more. And then with the forward trends in the markets, which we'll talk about you know, a bit more in a minute, you know, it can be managed and you can be comfortable about where that's going. But that's what happened in February. We still see some ripple effects, particularly in Texas, but um, it's that it just keyed right into the theme, Tom, that you had for this session around volatility. Mm -hmm. That was it. So when you look at volatility, I mean, when you look at the market volatility that's, that's happening or has happened the last few months, do you see that being a trend over the next couple of years where Will it be volatility like this over and over? Will it just like be like this and like that given a, a, an event? Yeah, it's, there's going to be the events. And the, issues is our, the issue is, of course, we don't know when those events are going to be. Right. 
if and you've got charts, we have papers, I mean, we can provide them to your members to show natural gas from 2000 to 2021. Electricity prices in the retail market, same thing, right? Other commodity, um, gasoline prices. And there's these spikes and they're going to occur. We just don't know when they're going to be these peak periods based upon weather events often, sometimes on events in the industry. Hey, who would have guessed that the pipeline would have been closed down? The major gas pipeline. Right. Up to, yeah. That, wow, we kind of bounced back from that. But if, if you were positioned improperly during that and you were really concerned and, and your costs may have risen because of that. So things like that are going to occur. We have no control over them. What you can control is understanding your usage profile, having an advisor that, that, that's there when, when you need them and, and to plan for that. And then to have contracts and supply agreements and an overall look at your usage profile that, that works for you, for your business, and right. minimizes some of those risks around volatility, the peak events. You know, it's crazy to hear 20, because I can remember in 2005, I'd, I'd, been on, I'd been with MTI for three weeks, and I went to uh, what's called the ASM Heat Treat Show, and it was the first time I got really exposed to members and was talking to them from my booth. Mm -hmm. And that was back when, a, I can't remember which hurricane it was, but it was when a major hurricane hit in the Gulf, and it shut down so much. And I remember gas went nine, 10, 11, 12. It got all the way to 1450 by the exactly. time we got to the show. And I remember asking members, so when, when do you close your doors? They say, Tom, if it gets much past 1550, yeah. I can't, I, I'm just paying customers to come do our business. So I can't, I can't charge enough to make up for it. So I have to put change. Fortunately, it was shortly thereafter that we then saw the everything opened back up and the gas prices started going back down. But Right, the Marcellus shale and the right, shale right. and fracking and all that came on. But the two weather ventures you're talking to, of course, are Katrina and Rita. Right. And let me position that for you a little bit. So in 2005, a large percentage of the natural gas production that we use here in the U.S., our production, was offshore. Remember the big oil spill? Yeah. Oh, well, that shut things down. Well, right. fortunately for us, with the, uh, with the discoveries, the vast discoveries, in Texas, up in Appalachia, um, and then up in the upper Midwest and, and the Dakotas and Montana area of gas, and then fracking technology and other advanced um, technologies, we were able to come out of those storms and all that stuff, and then come out of the 08, 09 financial mess. Mm -hmm. And about that time, thank God, it was a godsend, these technologies came on, and it, it's mm -hmm. steadily, prices came, oil prices came on. Natural right. gas prices came down, and concurrently, gas uh, electricity prices came down. So gasoline prices came down. Mm -hmm. And one of the other ramifications of these discoveries in this technology is that now the U.S. is what we're, we're now the number one producer of natural gas in the world. At the time we weren't. We were importing a lot. We're still import, but we're still right. the number one producer. All right, number two, our production is much more protected now. Less of it is offshore. Mm -hmm. in the Gulf or off Alaska, or, and it's now inland, which barring a URI event right, right. is more protected. That, sure. was, that was a unicorn kind of thing where mm -hmm. the weather at that you know, was so extreme for so long, it did impact natural gas uh, availability and flow and pricing. It, you know, it didn't, exploration, all the opportunities still there. But the point is, is that all these things, of course, you know, work together but we're much better positioned with our natural gas supply. And then we were 15 years ago when you had the Katrina and the Rita events. And you're right, 12, 13, 14 bucks for gas. It was crazy. Electricity, yeah. Electricity went 10, 11, 12 cents. Clients were just, and- You know, you I'm know. glad we didn't have Zoom back then because if I was looking at a member, they'd probably <laughs> sweat and bullets all day long and during yeah, the call because it was, it was quite crazy. We, we were doing a lot of hand-holding, but uh, fortunately, We've been a big proponent of staying in front of your contracts and managing them. We had, there were very few situations where clients were exposed to monthly or two month extreme pricing because of the way it had been managed. So, you know, those are going to happen. The volatility right. is going to be there. You still know when and what. So I think you, you asked, so, you know, with all that going on, will it continue? What should clients look for? You know, what should customers be? Well, one of the things that can help a client, if, if they can access what are called peak alert notices. Mm -hmm. Many of the suppliers in the industry and APPI, other consultants would provide in advance, usually a day or two in advance, hey, it looks like we're gonna have extreme heat 
in Western Massachusetts yesterday. That notice came out Sunday night. And then again today, came out Monday and Tuesday. So if, if you can ratchet down, if you can be aware of that and come off your usage profile, you'll, you'll be in a lot better stead. Your capacity costs will be down. Your costs will come down. So peak alerts, and they can happen in the summer or the winter. Now, here we are already. It's, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, you're in Tennessee. It's still late spring. It's getting warm, but it's getting warmer faster. And we're right. seeing higher temperatures already. Texas is calling an alert this afternoon in some zones. So, you know, it's being aware, but having others, I think, watching it for you and saying, hey, here's a text. You know, if you can do something, do it. But if you can't, okay. But at least you've got other people looking out for you. So right. peak alerts, that's something. And then, you know, we all hear and read plenty of news and it's all over the map, really. And I learned to kind of focus, not include that in my focus, but really focus on industry specific, knowledgeable sources mm -hmm. and that are looking at things that at least a little bit in advance. Right. So, yeah. so, so earlier this year, Texas saw all those gas spikes and stuff. So, I mean, and when it was so unforeseen going off of what you just said, so what should members in these markets where gas or you know gets unstabilized what can they do to help stabilize mm -hmm. it once it takes off well <clears throat> they whether it's gas or electricity they're comparable in terms of how you you manage them and, and uh, what you're going to look for so the first thing is to really understand your usage profile mm -hmm. and there are a lot of tools available that aren't expensive to help the member whoever's managing this piece of their activity, understand their usage profile. There are specifically designed portals. We work with a vendor that's fantastic at this, that pulls all your invoices, pulls all your data, all your information. It's all right there. You can go into the portal, pull your cell phone up or you're sitting in the airport and look at your, at your energy profile if you'd like to. And then, you know, and see, oh, here are my invoices up to date, et cetera. So there's technology available like that. And it's not expensive, one. Two, um, once you really have a good feel for your profile, and you understand it and you can access the information, then you wanna look at different programs that are available through your local utilities, um, through suppliers, through other industry participants to help you manage your spend, both in terms of the cost per kWh or decatherm, as well as when you're using the power or the gas, can you manage that a little better? Because in turn, all that will, will result over time in lower total cost to you in two ways. One, you help manage your supply costs down. If you can manage your capacity cost, your demand factors in electricity. And there, again, the tools, this, this is not cutting edge stuff. This stuff's been around, right. it's fully developed, it's easy to use. A consultant, these vendors can set it up and you can, they can look at that if they want to, but they don't need to because they'll be fed what's important if it's right. Important. So things like that are things that members, frankly, should be considering. We have lots of information available about those. They can find them online if they want to do that themselves. But um, I would look at a portal-based usage and invoice capturing system mm -hmm. and, you know, consider that. And then from that, you can do a lot of things in terms of planning and managing. So, so I'm always wondering with any supplier of anything that's talking to customers, what that works with many, and you obviously work with 166 plus associations. Mm -hmm. What are some things that I meant that you've seen in other industries that our members may not know that they don't know? that you can right. kind of tap into to get share some new information that might help them today? I've touched on a couple of those already, and I'll just briefly mention again. Uh, you know, there are these peak peak day, peak notice mm -hmm. uh, notices available. It's just all electronic. You can, get, you can get a text if you want, or you get an email. So your consultant or your suppliers can help you with that, or you can go online and enroll for something. That's if, if they want to have that kind of information, and again, we don't want them geared into a screen, we want them talking to their employees and right. talking to customers. But this is gonna keep them more comfortable because they're like, oh, I'm gonna get alert if there's something that's really important. That's what right. we do. Um, the supply contracts that the natural gas suppliers offer, as well as the electricity suppliers. <clears throat> you know, there's, there's hundreds of gas and electricity suppliers. Some of the entities that our, that our members are contracted with through us and on their own, um, some of those suppliers provide both electricity and natural gas that are good at both. Some are good at one and not the other. Each of the suppliers has its own form, actually forms of supply contracts. And those contracts vary quite a bit. Mm -hmm. We touched about the, on this a little bit a couple of years ago, Tom, when we talked about 
the contract T's and C's and differentiators and things to look for. Well, you know what? When things are volatile, that's when these contract terms and conditions often are really most important, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and so if you're not prepared for that, if you haven't understood that or gotten or were able to get your supply contract position more in your favor as the consumer than the suppliers, someone's going to wear that risk mm -hmm. of the volatility, either in price per kWh or decatherm, how that's calculated, or in the usage profile. So things they should be looking for um, in the contract, key provisions are the material adverse change clause, where, again, suppliers use that clause different, differently in some different industry sectors and with different types of customers in different states even. So it's important that they understand that. Basically what that says is if there's a material adverse change that affects the supplier's cost structure or ability to supply the decatherm or the kilowatt to the customer at the price contracted for, the supplier has the discretion to pass through that cost. Well, so who's wearing that risk, right? right. Your members wearing the risk. Well, you can negotiate that away or there are different, some suppliers have contract provisions that are much more customer friendly than others. We also track suppliers' proclivity and history in actually invoking that provision. And if so, why do they do it? And then make them validate any additional charges that might be passed through. So those are things that are available to your members if they're not aware of that. Um, so that, and then um, let me give you an example of this and everyone can identify with this. So um, COVID-19, 2020, March 2020 through December basically, right, is that was a unique period. Well, right. the, there were a lot of suppliers that also, all suppliers and utilities went through that period, just like we did as businesses and individuals. And we all had issues with that around energy, whatever they were. Okay, well, we're just realizing some of those ramifications, but two important things from that, that all of your members can, are seeing, either at their businesses or their homes or both, no matter where they are in the country, number one. During that period, that nine to 10 month stretch, well, guess what? We burned a lot less KWH and decatherms in industry, right? right? And in transportation, nobody was going anywhere. Right. We burned more at home. We were doing these Zoom meetings. Yeah. So your residential bill shot up, which could be translated over a business account. But my point is, is that even with the increase on the resi side, it, it didn't match the decrease over here on the, on the other side where most KWH and decatherms are consumed in industry every year. Okay. So what that means is that the utilities bill a lot less. Yeah. Do you think they're going to sit around and not find a way to recoup that? Oh, how do, how do they get the difference? Yeah. They started last summer, some utilities filing for rate increases, and some of those are already now hitting. And if you're a governor, pick a state, or you're running the public utility commission or the public, you know, PUC of Texas, you know, you're like, okay, God, I really feel for these residentials. and but if, if my utilities can't make a return and can't be viable, then nothing works. So at the end of the day, tariff rates on your transmission and distribution side, separate apart from supply, we talked about that, those, that's trending. Those rates are going up. They're going up because of COVID. That's right. just going to start happening. Right. Two, they're going up because of the the policies that are happening now at the federal level and at some state levels around increasing, our, you know, however you feel about it, this is just real, uh, around a renewables grid security. Mm -hmm. You touched on that earlier with the hacking. Well, that's, so, that's a huge thing now. Look at the pipeline. Yeah. Right? So, you know, that's a cost now of doing business that utilities, they've always had it, but they really have it in spades now. And that cost is going to be passed through to all of us as, as consumers. The end product, is when you turn the switch on at home and you pay the, the invoice. Right. So, so those costs are going to start rippling through. So over the next two to three to four years, we're advising clients, look, you should be budgeting a two to 3% increase in your utility costs just because of that. Right. Just because of tariff rate increases on the distribution transmission side. On the energy side, if we can manage those costs down a little bit, then it can balance it out. So we those know. are some of the things they should be anticipating. It's always been a crazy business model to me when you think about utilities over the long haul, because I mean, about 15 to 20 years ago when they started coming out with grants to change out your AC to a more efficient unit and all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I changed out my AC in my last, in my last office building, I leased, they changed it out. And my electric bill went from $400 to 
to $100 overnight because I took a 10 year old unit away and replaced it with a brand new energy efficient unit. And I always think about, man, what an impact on utility companies. I mean, if, if your utilities are going down 75% because people are putting in new stuff, you obviously mm -hmm. have to, because your revenues are based upon getting so much money from each customer and, and it's right. going down. You got to get it back. Now, those things are still going on. Right. Almost all utilities have some form of incentive programs like that, either for residentials or for small businesses, usually. Right. Bigger businesses cut other types of deals. But for smaller and mid-sized businesses and residentials, there are, there are ongoing series that are ever-changing, and they have windows of opportunity to incent just that, HVAC upgrades, um, you know, lighting switch outs, things of that nature. So those are all going on. We track those and we figure those into our advisory work with our clients so that they're aware of that. But um, it, you're right, it's an interesting model because when that happens, the customer's usage goes down, but the reason the utilities bid is because they were pushed right. on the regulatory side to do that. Right. Say, look, we need to get greener and leaner and leaner and more efficient. So people need to update and upgrade their systems. And you know what? That's a good thing. There are, you know, your HVA system is, is healthier for you and your employees when it's right. up. Your, your lighting systems are more efficient and mm -hmm. can be more productive for workers on the factory floor. Right. The office if they're done right. So well, and you just look at everything is checks and balances. You look at remotes and, and an automated timing when someone walks out of a room and the AC turns off, you walk in and it turns on. Right. I mean, think of how much time an AC is probably not running, which is also another useless thing. So uh, automated systems have really had an impact. So so we've talked about volatility, we've talked about the market now. To wrap up that, and we've talked a little bit about contract terms, so to wrap up that, looking out two to five mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. what do you see the volatility happening over the next two to five years? How, how do you feel energy is going to pace itself? So I set the parameters a little bit about all-time lows were hit last year for both commodities uh, from July through October. This year, with coming out of COVID, and some of the regulatory changes and pushes, the utility issues I mentioned. This year, prices from now, they've been up a little bit in the first part of the year, but from now through the end of the year, prices for both gas and electricity are about, depending upon where you are, 10 to 20% higher than they were at this time last year. Mm -hmm. So that's, in place that's there the forward curves i'll show it if you're just buying for one month at a time you're seeing it gas today is at like 307 310 a deck of things the um governmental entities are projecting that for the year it's going to average around three bucks 305 but next year they're saying the average for gas should be a little under three dollars now that's compared to two years ago when it was going to be in the low twos and last year when we saw it under two for sorry. right so the rest of this year, prices are a little higher than they were last year. However, starting in 2022 through 2025, the forward curves for natural gas are fairly flat, again, barring those spikes. And Yuri. Then, <laughs> Yuri. Yuri. And then um, for electricity, it's similar. Um, I just had a review with our senior team, consultants. We do it every Wednesday, 1130, and we have to, and so I said, I'm going to use this with Tom this afternoon. So. One of the charts that we look at is, okay, compared to the all-time low, where is this utility zone's current electricity prices for the rest of this year in the next three to four years? So you go PJM West Hub, right? You go, you go um, MISO, which is you know middle part of the country. You go ERCOT, right. Texas, right. New England, New York, California, CAISO. And, it, and the, it shows you the bar charts. Well, this year, the bar for the rest of this year is, is like here, it's a, it's a little higher. Last year it was here. Well then next year, it's a little under that. And then the following year it's a little under that. And the following year it's about the same. So members right now, if they look forward a couple years and they wanna blend the prices with what they need to pay for the rest of this year, they're gonna have a price in that, you know, high twos, 3%, that three buck range for gas. Now that's for the supply, that's just the commodity, so you mm -hmm. still have your utility costs. Right. Transportation. And again, what are those gonna do? Those are gonna go up. Right. They're going up. So plan on it. And then with electricity is very similar. So looking out, that's what the forward curves show us. The thing about the forward curves, no matter what consultant that you talk to, or if you do the research online yourself, they are what they are. Right. right? There's a lot of data and research and 
algorithms that have been used by all these resources and sources to create these forward curves. And the suppliers in the industry use those resources and their own. And the forward curves are right. They're accurate as of today. When we wake up tomorrow morning, they're gonna be almost the same. There'll be a little bit of difference. Why? Because energy prices change every day. They'll be right and to that moment. If you have a volatility event, you know, yeah. next week, you're gonna get the spike and then it'll take, it'll take a couple of days to settle in. And that what, uh, brings me back to one of the points you raised earlier. So in 2005, when we had those events, mm -hmm. it took months for the markets, you remember, to right. really get settled back down. It, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, fortunately for us now, our platforms are more um, uh, mature. We have gas reserves more and they're more protected. Right. Um, the electricity, trading platforms are much more mature. The competitive markets are very vibrant. So it doesn't take nearly as long. In fact, after a couple of big hurricane events in Texas the last couple of years, when they had that drastic flooding in Houston and down in the Bay, and right. it's horrible. Well, in that immediate area, it took a week or so, but within two days, the forward markets were almost right exactly back where they were. Mm -hmm. That's a big difference. Yeah. Why is it technology, both on the ground and on the computer, is managing it better? Well, it just shows you how fast things move nowadays with technology. Yeah. So, 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 we, so we talked about, um, so is there anything, on, so talk about buying for a moment. Is there anything members should know about whether it's uh, new or innovative ways of, of actually buying or, or positioning yourself with your energy mm -hmm. strategies? Is there anything, any comments on that? Well, there's, a, there are, I wouldn't say that they're new, but there's the you know, next iterations of yeah. analytical tools that consultants mm -hmm. and suppliers have and use to look at these forward markets. But, and I'm getting back to something I talked about earlier in that the prices that your members are quoted and that they end up paying, if, 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 if it's a fixed price, even just for a month, okay, it's going to be based on them in large measure, on their usage profile, on their credit history. Right. on the contract terms that they're able to negotiate. Same way if it's a long-term deal is fixed. If you're managing your usage, you know, you're not hedging all your commodity, gas or electricity, or you're only hedging a percentage of it, which is fine. That's a good strategy to use. In fact, one of the strategies we saw now as we hit those lows, right? It was, we, had, we were encouraging people last year to lock in for length and, P, and clients all across the nation were doing that for as much as three, four, five, six years. Right. And they were hedging 100% of gas or power. They're happy, they're, they're moving on, they're talking to their employees and their customers today. Because it can't go down much more than a buck 43, right? Well, and it didn't, and it's already <laughs> up, right? Yeah, because at some point, you know, Exxon's <laughs> gonna figure it out and say, no, we're not going any lower. Right. <laughs> so, but at, um, so in any event, um, now, but the market's different, I just described that. So maybe a, a client that, used to be completely open or unhedged and experienced jury, that was horrible, but maybe they'll hedge a percentage of their load, take advantage of peak alerts, have a, a trusted advisor they're talking to to help them determine when they wanna hedge more and, and not have all the eggs in one riskier basket, you know, spread it out, or more or less dollar cost averaging, if you will. Right. Now, and if you look again past this year, the next three years prices are a little lower than they are right now. So maybe it makes sense to take some of those years off the table now, either electricity or gas. So let, let's finish up with, con, uh, at least on this topic, with contract terms. So in, the, in, in my world of associations, we do big meetings, right? And has mm -hmm. two or three a year and associations put, we have our f and that goes on the show. So the pandemic, when we started canceling our meetings, it dramatically shifted, that extreme event began to dramatically shift contract terms and when we can cancel, force majeure was right. huge. So during, during this, incredible February and some of this volatility, is there anything that members should be wary of about contract terms that could be shifting because either volatility or the, they all of a sudden see, wow, another big event could come because we wouldn't yeah. need to shift this. So what's going on in the world of terms and notes? Yeah. Well, again, we've got that material adverse change language you want to look for, but another one is around your bandwidth and usage profile. If you have a hundred percent swing or bandwidth, let me speak to that. So, and I've got a, an example that's live that, customers are experiencing right now around okay. that. So your usage profile, again, suppliers run their algorithms. Okay, fine. We're going to offer you three, three bucks a decatherm fix for three years on your usage profile, on your 
contract quantities based upon your history and what you're telling us your growth might look like. Okay, so we put those contract quantities in the contract. Well, if you go over or under those, those quantities each month and they're measured each month, the contract may have a provision that says, oh, well, you know, we're gonna hold you strictly to that and when you're over, we're gonna charge you additional amounts at a certain formula. If you're under, we'll credit it, but typically the credit isn't that much. But the point is, is that your usage profile and how much you, you hedge is, to, is tied to this um, bandwidth provision and your monthly quantities. You have to really understand that and be comfortable with those, unless you just want to hedge everything. And in electricity contracts in particular, most of the top suppliers now, the top tier ones, have realized that they need to give clients a 75% to 100% bandwidth provision and not charge more for it because the market's pushed it there. We right. push for that. So what that means is if you use a thousand decatherms a month now, you could use up to 2000 decatherms a month or you use a million KWH, you could go to 2 million if you have hundred percent swing and the price cannot be adjusted because of your usage chain. Right. Right now. Now. So let's assume that you, you didn't have that or you had another contract provision that overrode that. Some suppliers had that with clients through COVID and after COVID. So now they've gone back and started billing customers additional amounts for their usage drop because they didn't use as much and charging them the suppliers additional costs because their usage dropped during COVID. Right. Now, the contracts may have had notice provisions as the clients were aware of it and noticed the supplier, then they could work with that, but or not. So all this is intertwined and you talk about an event, a volatile event. Well, COVID was a nine, 10 month yeah. volatile event. Long. So, but that's how all this blends together. So it really is important to fully understand that contract. Whether you're buying some type of metal or you're buying an employee benefit, you know, you're buying energy, mm -hmm. that service contract right. is key. Right. So, you know, get some help on it. So we've talked about strategy, we've talked about volatility, we've talked about unforeseen things that happen, we've talked about, so one, one thing before I get to the last point, do you see any, do you, have you seen any change in U.S.'s energy policies that are going to shift things in the energy world that we should be mm -hmm. aware of? Yeah, Yo, oh, definitely so. And this, this started even before um, last fall's elections at the federal level and then the new administrations. This, this started and now they've been accelerating a bit. Okay, a couple of things. One we've talked about, uh, security of the gas pipelines and the electricity grid. Mm -hmm. There were breaches and issues on both of those for more than a decade. But they've really come to the forefront now. We, we don't need to dwell on it, we're all aware. Of it. That is a big deal. So right. the utilities, along with the regulators at the state and federal level are on it and they're going to require funding from all sources to beef that up and improve it okay so that's important and that's going on. secondly the push for renewables now 10 12 years ago solar was highly incented just take solar hydro because there wasn't much of it and the technology was coming on but it wasn't quite there yet so from an economic point of view it really didn't compete with coal or nuclear or even wind. Solar didn't. Well, you know what? Three, four years ago, suddenly it was. Even with gas prices down, mm -hmm. electricity prices down, solar costs were steadily coming down, gas and so that they crossed a couple of years ago. And just and then uh, solar costs per KWH are now under quite a bit, coal. Mm -hmm. And it's comparable to some other uh, resources. So that is a trend that's continued. Now, interestingly, just this year, as a result of su supply chain issues, primarily, right? We all know what lumber. I mean, you know, it's yeah, crazy. Oh, wow. it's, 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 that's out of control. Yeah, and then and then all of the technology how that goes into computers, right? That's that's moving up. So, well, solar is sort of a combination. You know, if you look at it, they don't use lumber, but the metal they use and the inverters they use are a piece of metal fashioned with some smart technology in it so that they can convert you know, the, the sun to electricity. Guess what? The cost of those that have been coming down steadily for all these years bottomed out and is now starting to move up. So, and the incentives at the federal and state levels at the utility levels 
are increasing every year the um, thresholds that they have to meet from a renewables or green supply continue to go up. So there's gonna, there's a bigger demand for solar and wind, offshore and onshore. Right. What does that mean when there's a bigger demand? Prices are gonna edge up a little bit. And right. combine that with the supply chain issues and other commodities. So we're gonna see more renewables and the cost of that is ultimately gonna be borne by all of us as consumers right. through the tariff increases, um, yet, in many cases, if your members have a good roof or they have some extra land, they should look at maybe solar as an option. Mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't matter in whatever state they're in. You, they right. should take a look at it because the cost of it now can be quite, um, quite attractive. And there's lots of financing available for it from third party financiers that, that mm -hmm. want to fund it. There's a 26% investment tax credit at the federal level for this year and next year. So if you have owners making a lot of money and they have a building or assets, you can work with a solar developer and come up with a solution that can really help them perhaps from a tax perspective too. Right. So those are things that they should be thinking through. Absolutely. So before I get to the last question, last point. So looking back at the contracts, strategy, technology, is there anything that we did not head, head on, hit on that you feel like members should walk away hearing, hearing this as well? Um, no, I think you covered it uh, by and large. And, um, I think that maybe kind of close perhaps with the thought, you know, well, why, you know, why should we, uh, why should we interact with APBI or, mm -hmm. or another consultant? Well, not, don't, don't take my thunder. That was going to be my last question. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, so, all right. Well, but I'm just saying, you know, I've already yeah. touched on a lot of the things that members can get from professionals, pros right. in this space that they don't have to do themselves. Right. Well, so, that comes so through your member benefit. So what I was going to ask you is really what's just to give members a more closer view. So what separates APPI you think from other energy okay. providers that, and the reason why we are working with you for them? Mm -hmm. um, I'll uh, repeat a couple of things I mentioned and I'll add a few. The first one is this concept that you and your team and advisors and board, along with the boards of 160 plus other associations have all vetted APPI. Mm -hmm. These are professionals, leaders in their industries, that wanted to get a relationship in place or a member benefit program that their members can access that's gonna provide them fully independent advisory services. And that's APPI, where we're not aligned with any supplier or utility or outside of finance source, we're completely independent. We're agnostic as to which supplier or solution the member's gonna choose. Once we're comfortable that, that they're good and they fit, then that's okay. We're not. I'm not going to go one way or another. So there's that independence. Um, third, I think you look at the longevity. We've been at this since 1996. That's our 25th year. Mm -hmm. um, and we're active in all the deregulated markets around the country. Over you know, 2,000 clients, 40,000 meters, tens of billions of K to H under management and Decatherm. So there's a lot of uh, history there and a lot of um, um, ballast that benefits your members right. as, as they're working with us. Finally, you know, I mean, I think our, all of our procurement services are done by inter our internal in-house staff that exceeds 50 people full-time now. We have folks all around the country. Most of them are headquartered or based near our headquarters in Maryland, but we have, we have folks all around the country and we participate in events like your events mm -hmm. and so to, but to provide education and access. And we're there, we're, we're there. We have a full service in-house customer service team as well as our consultants that are always available to your members. Right. So you pick the phone up and call us, what do you want to talk about? You have a question with an invoice, give us a call. Whether they're a client or whether they're a client of ours or not, mm -hmm. pick the phone up and call us, we'll help you. So I think those are, you know, most of the um, differentiators. Um, and the proof is in the pudding, like everything, you know. Right. If, if your members will give APPI a call, shoot us an email, it's all on the website. Somebody will reach out to them promptly, of course, and then ask, okay, how do you think we can help you? Well, I'm not really sure. Well, what are you doing now? And here's what right. I'm doing. Let's, let me get a really good picture of what you're doing now and get the right consultant assigned to your member and then you go to work. That's awesome, Mike. So members, I want you to hear this. So in this day and age, uh, we're gonna have another uh, webcast soon on, and we just actually had him speak a while back on the labor drought. And we're on an eight to 10 year labor drought where it's gonna be very tough. So it's important that you're spending 100% of your time really focused on your employees, and your customers. And if you want to look at energy prices, not a big deal. That's your choice. But we're really encouraging members to really rethink how they 
get work done. And I think one of the keys is to tap into MTI's resources, the people that are literally a partnership and a part of your team that help you do very key things like buy your energy um, as well as some other things. So I want to encourage you to work with Mike. Uh, you can, if you're looking, how do we find out about uh, his company? Uh, you can go to heattreat.net. That's our website, heattreat.net. And in the top, you're going to see a link that says industry support team. When you click that, you'll see our entire list of, we've got a dozen different industry partners who are there to help you in a whole host of different areas. And you can find them on there and you can click into the person that's key to our industry and they can get you some help. So Mike, really appreciate, appreciate you being here for this 45 minutes and, and giving your wisdom to everybody and members. Um, we thank you so much for your support. The, the future is bright, but it is not without is. challenges. And we are here for you every single day, making sure that you are succe you're succeeding. So remember, you're not just strong, you're MTI strong. I will see you on June 22nd on the next MTI Live. Mike, thank you again very much. Thank you, Tom, very much. Have a great day, everybody.